Hi, I'm Brian. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody, let's build us a carport. Um, what I'm gonna try and do here is I'm gonna try and walk through my, my design in SketchUp over here on the left, and I'm gonna try and cover the pricing, or at least what I expect, over here on the right. Sorry, guys, I forgot to mention, before I get too deep into this pricing, I should mention that I did use the bid desk at Home Depot. Uh, if you don't know what that is, any big box uh, lumber retailer should have, should be able to discount pricing for larger orders. It's usually in the neighborhood of a thousand to two thousand dollars. If you're going to be spending that much money, I highly recommend that you use their whatever their mechanism of discounting pricing for larger orders is. So these prices are discounted. So uh, to talk about just the, the general design, I'm looking to build a three bay carport. Uh, that's to hold our two vehicles and then some miscellaneous things, other things, anything that we'd like to keep kind of out of the elements to a degree. They don't necessarily have to be an enclosed area, but to keep them out of the sun and the rain is kind of nice as well. So so that's what I'm going with. It's a pretty good size. And uh, when I looked online, it was hard to find something kind of this big. So I had to kind of make it up myself. Um, so here's my best shot at it. So here's, here's what we've got. We're starting with, I'll build this a piece at a time. Um, we're starting with uh, our posts. So I've got 16 posts here. And basically I'm going, my dimensions here are kind of left to right here. This is my, these are my three bays basically that I'll be able to drive into and out of. I want it to be a drive through. So both sides of this are tall enough to drive into and out of. Um, so these three bays, the dimensions here are 30 feet across the front from left to right and from front to back, uh, 24 feet. So each of these little bays is roughly about 10 feet wide, uh, minus, you know, the size of the actual post. And same thing from, from front to back, these these spaces are about eight feet minus the size of these of these uh, posts. So that gives me 24 feet front to back. The reason for that is our truck is a good 21 or so feet long. So to get that truck completely under this, it had to be pretty good size. So that's our dimensions here. Uh, the roof will be slightly bigger because it'll overhang on all sides, but we'll talk about that shortly. So the first thing to do is put some beams in the ground, so or um, some, some posts in the ground. So uh, I've got over here on the right, you can see I've got my posts. Those are treated. This is the only treated wood I'm using or th that I'm purchasing treated. So uh, we've got 16 of those posts, basically four rows of four. Um, so there they are in their current prices. Keep in mind, of course, lumber prices change quite a bit. Right now they tend to be pretty high. Um, so this, this number obviously could change, but this is what they are as I'm making them. And to go along with those posts, I'm going to be putting them in the ground about two feet. Uh, so I've got some concrete mix here as well. I'm, I'm planning on two bags of concrete per post uh, for a total of 32 bags. And I'm also going to get some braces, just some two by four braces, uh, to as I put those posts in the ground, just to kind of brace them temporarily to keep them plumb and everything while they're, while they're setting. So I'm going to throw some braces in there. So there's those things accounted for on the right in my in my pricing. So that's that gives us a beam. I'm sorry, a post structure to put our next piece on top of, which will be our beams. And there they are. Those beams are also four by six uh, lumber. They're the same dimensions, and that's on purpose because, as you can see, as I zoom in here, the way those will kind of sit across. Those will lay across the top of those posts like so. Okay, so they're the same dimensions. These are not treated, however. So over here, as you can see in my in my material list, I've got 10 foot beams and 12 foot beams. They are four by six, either by 10 foot or by 12 foot. And the reason they're 10 footers and 12 footers is that whole bay structure that I talked about and the overhang of the roof. So on the outer bays, on the left and right, the beam will overhang the edge of the bay so that the roof can kind of overhang, right? So that that beam is a 12 foot long beam to give us a, a 10 foot bay with roughly two feet of overhang off to the side. And the same thing over here on the right, that's a 12 foot beam so that it can hang over. But this beam in the middle really only needs to span this post to this post, which is a 10 foot area. Uh, as you can see, uh, SketchUp is yelling at you right now, just pay no attention to that. 
but um, that only has to span basically that 10 foot area so that can be just a 10 foot beam so so I will have one two three four down the middle of this thing four 10 foot beams as you can see I've put four 10 foot beams over here on the right and the 12 foot beams will be on the down the left side four of those and down the right side four of those so I'll have a total of eight of those over here on the right so eight 12 foot beams and there's their pricing uh, to attach those I've covered that over here we're gonna use what's called a post cap there are lots of different kinds of post caps um, we'll see what these post caps look like later on when I purchase them and we show them going together but uh, I'm gonna use two I'm gonna use a post cap that that requires two per post so it basically kind of goes on uh, it connects to each side of the beam on top of this on top of the post but you'll see what they look like later but I just know that I need two per so I've I've accounted for that over here and the nails that will attach those those post caps to the beams and posts so I've accounted for that over here so that'll get us a a beam structure to then much like think of this as a roof on any other structure you know um, between two walls or whatever um, the next thing I'm going to do is place some rafters across these so let's throw our rafters in so that's what our rafters look like pretty standard except for the fact that these are very long so as I said I'm spanning you know 24 feet from front to back of this structure and I'm also hanging over about two feet on either end so this this rafter or actually these three pieces so I'll just highlight them all at once if you think of this as one rafter it's 28 it's spanning 28 feet and it's actually made up of three pieces of lumber because I can't go buy a 28 foot board um, so I had to do some some figuring to figure out how to kind of lay this out so this is part of the reason why I've got so many posts in the ground so that I can support all of these things right so again much like the beams that uh, that span from post to post and the beams meet on top of the posts if I didn't mention that as you can see here when those as I'm going from one beam to the next you know they will meet on top of a post so they're both supported there well the same idea with the rafters or pieces of rafter right three three boards that make up one rafter they will meet and they will meet on top of one of those beams like so uh, I should talk about the slope this is a very minimal slope I'm using here and there are a couple reasons for that number one we live in a climate where I can kind of get away with that I'm not gonna have a ton of snow sitting on top of this thing and also it just its only function this things this roofs only function is to provide shade and to funnel some rainwater down to one side right for rainwater collection so it doesn't have to be super crazy sturdy it's not gonna be supporting a ton of weight or anything like that so I kept the slope really minimal another reason I wanted to do that is because if you do kind of a standard slope and I mean it depends on where where you live what a standard slope might be but for example for my shed I did what's called a one and a half and twelve so for every twelve inches that you move laterally you go up uh, an inch and a half or every 12 feet you move laterally you go up a foot and a half well on my shed I was only spanning about 12 feet so so one end of the shed has to be a foot and a half higher than the other side of the shed to get that that rise right that slope well if I employed that same logic here this is 24 feet from front to back twice as long so if I wanted to go up an inch and a half for every 12 inches or a foot and a half for every 12 feet I would be rising from the back of this thing to the front of this thing three feet and I didn't really want as I said I wanted this to be a drive-through so the one in the low end of this has to be at least tall enough for my truck to drive through right so that's around seven feet is where I have this low end at that would mean that my high end would be at 10 feet and I really didn't want to have a a, a carport that had an a roof that was 10 feet in the air so I wanted to keep it lower so I minimized that slope and I think I can do that so I just wanted to cover the slope that I'm doing here so so anyway I'm creating a one long rafter out of three pieces of lumber similar logic to the beams the the front and in this case the front and the back um, this guy and this guy are longer because they have to cover this space and they have to overhang so in this case they're covering eight feet of space and they're hanging over by two feet so these pieces are ten feet long and the middle piece only has to span that gap with no overhang so it only has to be eight feet long so over here on my materials list I've got both eight foot rafters and ten foot rafters and that's to build that one long rafter so that's there's my numbers over there and again for connections I'm gonna use rafter ties 
Uh, they're kind of the diamond uh, type of rafter tie. It's a hurricane tie. Um, you'll, again, you'll see what they look like, but just know that I need a bunch of those. I've got 108 actually here because I, I have to use multiple ties when, when these pieces of rafter meet on this beam. I kind of have to use one on both sides. So, so that's the number of rafter ties I need and the nails that go along with those rafter ties. So that's all covered over here. And the last step of kind of the lumber side of things, prior to the metal roof, which this will have a metal roof on it, um, the last piece of lumber is our furring strips or uh, purlins. Um, and the purpose of these is for a connection point for the pieces of metal roofing that we're going to put on this. So, for example, if I didn't have these furring strips here, you know, that metal roofing has to be screwed on. Uh, basically, you, you place a screw next to every rib on the on the metal roofing, and those ribs are about nine inches apart. So, so you need lots of screws kind of from side to side here, right? And you need something, those screws have to screw into something. And if all I had was the, the rafters, because I'm not putting a flat surface, you know, OSB or, or plywood on top of this, um, like I did on my shed, um, I need a, a connection point. So that's what these purlins do. They give you a connection point to put all the screws for the metal roofing. They don't have to be super substantial. They are one by three strips of lumber. Um, and they, again, much like the other pieces, they will straddle across these rafters and they'll meet where they need to, where you need to transition from one to the next. They'll meet on top of a rafter. So they'll both sit on there. So they also give an additional, uh, they serve an additional purpose they give you some, some racking uh, stability, uh, much like blocking between rafters would do. That would actually be placed between these rafters. Uh, you'd kind of jam it in between these rafters to maintain that spacing so that as the, that wood wants to bow or, or warp or forces are applied to that and it wants to twist, it'll resist that. This, these furring strips will do the same thing because they're attached to the tops of every one of these rafters. They will maintain that that's that structure and stability as as wind forces are applied to this structure. So they give you a little more more stability. So that's what our furring strips are doing. So over here I've got my furring strips um, from the from the metal roof manufacturer. I talked to the metal roof manufacturer and they told me that I should place those at least uh, three feet apart. So I've got them spaced. I've got them spaced close to three feet apart here, and it gives me, I think, eleven rows of these. So that ends up, ends up having fifty-five strips of of eight foot, you know, furring strips, and the screws that are required to attach those. So that gets us to the point. That is our structure, and the only thing left is the metal roofing. So that that is basically our bill, let's say, from from a, a big box store, lumber store. And I've got that with a delivery fee even at around seventeen hundred dollars. So that's that's up to that point, and that would only leave us with our next piece, which would be the metal. So here's our metal roofing. So there's a look at it, and there's the rib structure that I was talking about. If I zoom in here, you can see kind of there's. I just drew it real quick, but you know, that's not exactly what it looks like, but it's pretty close. So it's got these ribs basically nine inches apart. And when you screw it down, you're going to be screwing it down beside these ribs along the way. So again, that's why you needed something underneath there. That's what the furring strip provides a spot to, to screw that metal to. Um, these metal pieces are, they look like, as I highlight one here, this is what they look like. They actually span the whole structure from, from front to back. These are 28 feet long. And they give you about three feet of coverage from left to right. They're actually a little bigger than three feet because they, they overlap each other at the edges, the one rib, the rib of this panel will sit on top of the last rib of this panel. So they're actually slightly bigger than three feet, but they end up giving you three feet of coverage. And since my structure is, I told you it was 30 feet kind of on the ground side to side with some overhang, I actually have it at 33 feet. Uh, the roof is 33 feet. And like I said, 28 feet front to back because of overhang. And I did that 33 on purpose because that will allow me to use exactly 11 panels and it will fall kind of right to the end and I won't have to cut it or anything so that'll be nice and clean. So I've got 11 of those panels. I'm back over to our pricing list over here. Here's 11 of those panels at 28 feet long 
and then there's some some trim and some and some fasteners and things. So down the sides, we'll need trim pieces. Um, those trim pieces are a little over 10 feet long. So because of the sizing of my structure, I need six total pieces of the trim down the side. I need three on each side, basically. And across the front here, there will be a piece of trim across the front. And because that's over 30 feet and they're about 10 feet long, I'll need four pieces of those. Uh, and then a bunch of screws to screw all that down. And then some tape, some butyl tape to put along each uh, from one panel to the next, we'll put a, a, a strip of butyl tape along here. That's just to give us a little bit of a seal. And again, that's that's mostly necessary in this case because I don't have a solid surface underneath the, underneath this roof like like I did on my shed. I don't have plywood or OSB covered by some sort of uh, roofing paper, right? Whether it be synthetic or some sort of underlayment to stop uh, moisture from getting through. So because I don't have that. I'm going to put butyl tape down the, down here. I did not do that on my shed, but that's because I had a solid structure underneath it. And then they apply a packaging fee and they have a delivery fee as well. So I've got, and that's, I'm getting that from Thunder Mountain Metal Sales. Uh, they're local to Tucson. And I used them for my shed roof and have been very happy with it. And I'll be using it for this roof and I'll probably use it for my, on my house roof as well. So we love Thunder Mountain Metal Sales. And it's really easy. Stuff's really easy to put together. They're really easy. At, they're real good at. They manufacture it right there. They deliver it to you. Like I said, you can. I can get. I'm getting these things 28 feet long. I mean, that's a big panel. So uh, it's nice that I can get that made right to size. And they they custom make everything for you. So uh, so that's going to cost about 1,250 bucks. So when you put those two together, I'm right at about I'm right at about three grand for this structure. So I think that's pretty reasonable. It's a pretty big structure. It's going to give me a lot of shade. It's going to protect my vehicles. Um, I can use it for other shade reasons as well. If I ever want to pull the vehicles out and have a little bit of a social gathering under here, that's a nice shade structure in the summer sun out here in Arizona. So um, that is my plan. That is my design. That is the expected pricing. We'll see how all this bears out. We'll see if it really plays out this way. See if I missed anything as we go. But uh, that's the design and the expected pricing, so let's get it started. Come on back, and the first step, I guess, will be... Uh, actually, the first step will be prepping. I'll do some ground prep um, before I really get started with this material, so we'll cover the ground prep as well, but then we'll get into putting these posts up. So come on back if you like this, and uh, we'll see you on the next one.